One of the important things um, I want you to realize is that while you may be having students watch the lecture outside of class and they come in and they do, that your class time should be spent up in lecture outside the course so that the time that comes in with a flipped classroom is actually working in groups with other teams or also working, having an instructor helping you as a guide on the side to come by and help you through it. And she so should be prepared to do that. A lot of faculty are so used to being the center of the room and center of instruction that they have to be willing to let, con let control go to interact with the students. And I can promise you this, that if you're willing to let that control go and interact directly with the students and have, guide them, you're gonna find that there's much deeper learning that occurs. They actually have much thorough understanding and they can do so much more than you may have thought they could have done prior. As for doing creating the videos, you don't want to be sitting there and basically videotaping of you lecturing. That's not going to work. There are guidelines for multimedia instruction that you should be taking into account here. Like for example, if you had a PowerPoint slide, you don't want to be sitting here and being a talking head and just reading off the PowerPoint slide directly. It's on the screen, they can read. You know, you don't want to be reading that off because they're not going to process it separately. But what you can do is say you have a demonstrate, um, either a demonstration video or an animation. You might say, let's observe the animation. Let's see what's happening. Have them observe the animation. So you say, okay, now what would happen if I did this? Let's think about this. What could, I, what could we do to make this change? Or something like that where you're talking about, okay, I want you to notice in this animation. You start talking about it. So you're talking about something different than what's necessarily on the screen while you're talking. You don't want to be regurgitating what's on the screen. And so one of the key things is having this understanding of what the lecture is and how to do this multimedia instruction is, because it's not just the same as lecturing. And then coupling that with how do I do student-centered classes, active learning. And having these two tied together so that they're closely tied and they make an efficient educational experience for the students. The other thing to be aware of is that if you're going to ask students a quiz, you shouldn't necessarily say, oh, I'm going to ask them a quiz on what they were supposed to do. It's sort of like asking a reading quiz. Did you read your notes? Or did you read the textbook? We know students aren't necessarily going to read the textbook. So what you do is you want to have that quiz, that idea, see if they're learning on it, to have that be after they just finished washing things, things they have access to, they can play around and do it. And then you may want to ask some more next step questions. I like to call them, so what do you think will happen if we do this? Or, what, let's, or question, let's th question to think about. So let's be thinking about this because they know we're going to talk about this when we come to class today. So you can then ask them a question, think about it, see where people are, then have them work in their teams to sort of figure out what that answer is and have that be a true learning experience, not just me telling, because if I just tell you the information, best you can do is memorization of it. So it's, maybe you can connect two facts together. But if you want those deeper, higher order thinking skills happening, you've got to go so far beyond just basic lecture and memorization. Mm -hmm.